Hello, hello, American Crochet Association. Selena Baca here, founder, host, lead educator with the ACA, and it's Tuesday, and that means I've got a great tip and chat planned for you guys today. So if you are watching live, come on over, say hey, say hello, tell me where you're viewing from, and feel free to make this a fun conversation, whether you're watching live or on the replay, because either way, it's gonna be the same great jam. Now, the topic today is, is sparked from a conversation uh, that we were having in our group. If you guys are not already part of our community, our American Crochet Association group community, community, you guys can find that link in the video description here. So you can come on over and participate more in this conversation, or frankly, just, you know, find more conversations like this. So I posted a question, uh, gosh, just a couple days ago, and it had an overwhelming response. So I said, okay, this has got to be the this has got to be the chat today, okay? So my question was, would you be interested in a template to help you write crochet patterns? Would you? All right. So our response in the group after just a couple days again was overwhelming. It reached. Uh, so much of our audience, uh, we had a lot of likes, we had a lot of comments, a lot of conversation. Overwhelmingly so, a lot of you guys, a lot of crocheters would be interested in a template to write you, to help write crochet patterns. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Uh, so before we jump into that, I see quite a few of you guys are watching live. So let me just pause for a moment. I love giving shout outs to everybody in our community who watches. Dipali, always so good to see you. Thank you for being here. Francis is here. Terry Sampson is here. Diane is here from Iowa. Thank you for checking in. Margit is here. And finally, last but not least, I'll give a shout out to Rama Laksmi. Rama, it's always so good to see you in our community. All right, so anybody watching live or on the replay, does this interest you? Would you be interested in having a template that would help you write crochet patterns? Maybe you're already kind of dabbling in the pattern writing realm. Maybe you just kind of write things down for yourself just because you kind of make up your own thing and you just want a better system for writing down uh, those instructions. You, you, you know, there's got to be a template out there, right? Maybe you're already writing crochet patterns and maybe you're, you're sharing them in, you know, any way you can share crochet patterns. Maybe... Uh, maybe you're adding listings somewhere. Maybe you're sharing them on a blog. Maybe you're, you want to write for books or magazines. So no matter what you're doing, uh, when it comes to writing down crochet instructions, my secret is there is a universal template that you can follow. So what I want to share with you guys today and just stick with me. Okay. Because they're there, everything that I'm sharing with you today, hold on, let me get my formatting, right? Everything that I'm sharing with you guys today the links are available in the video description, okay? So just stay with me through the live, ask any questions you like. Again, we're gonna make it a fun conversation, okay? So at the American Crochet Association, I have produced a pattern writing course, okay? So what this course tells you is everything you need to know about writing patterns at a universal level. What does a universal level mean? Well, of course, anybody can write crochet patterns. Anybody can do whatever they want to with those crochet patterns. Uh, however, there's a difference between you doing whatever you think makes sense to you and then writing in a way that a universal audience can read, understand, and successfully complete those instructions. So that's what I like to teach in this course. Uh, within this course, again, link in the video description, within this course, there's a lot of information that goes into writing a crochet pattern. So again, maybe this is just something you want to do uh, just for yourself, you're not sharing it with anyone, you just want a better way, right? So there's there's one side of the spectrum. The other side of the spectrum is you want to write your own crochet patterns and you know you want to submit them to magazines and you want to start a blog or you want to have a Ravelry and, and Etsy listings and stuff like that. So maybe they're for no one and maybe you want them to be for everyone. So depending on where you lie in that spectrum, there is a lot that goes into writing a crochet pattern. So this course gives you everything that you need to know from everything you need to know about yarn, weight fiber cover, co weight fiber color, how to read yarn labels, what substitution means, how to care for your yarn and projects. So all that stuff, everything you need to know about crocheting swatches, what they are, gauge, function, practice, color, feel, uh, everything you need to know about pattern reading, parts of a pattern, experience levels, pattern instructions, stitch diagrams, 
Uh, sizing essentials. This is really kind of one of the main questions people have about writing patterns. How do I gauge things? How do I size things? What's a repeat? How do I make this stitch into a pattern? It, everything is included. Uh, so, um, oh, it's not, there we go. Now we're scrolling. Now we're scrolling. Uh, lots of other kinds of information. Again, depending on what kind of pattern you'd like to write, you might need to know more about seams and joins and finishing. So all of that information is included to give you a better uh, baseline of information so that you can have, again, that baseline of information so you can be more informed when it comes to the types of things that you can create and crochet. So this particular course goes over all of those questions you probably have about originality of content, what plagiarism is, what copyrights are, to assure that you are writing your own unique patterns and you're not, you know, you're, you're not plagiarizing, you're not, you know, what, copyright questions, trademark questions, things like that. So you're not infringing on any of that. I talk about business models. I, and then, of course, you know, you guys want to know about templates. We're going to get to that in just a minute. Templates are included, how to write instructions, the testing and proofing process, and then the publishing process. Okay, so all of that is included in this course. So just know that anything you'd like to know in the pattern writing process, I'm pretty sure I've got an answer for you. So keep those questions coming. But you guys just want a template for now. So that's what I want to show you. When you click on the link in the video description, you are going to find this course, our pattern writing course available at the American Crochet Association. And you guys can view the pattern writing template as a free preview. Uh, that's only going to be for a limited time. We're probably not going to have it open forever and always. But right now, today and for a while, we want as many people as possible to check this out. So when you click preview, you're going to be taken to the course content. And I'm actually going to show you one of the samples and kind of walk you through it. Okay. But right now, this page, this part of the course is free. So we actually have three different samples, how you can save the sample. And then there is a very old video of whenever I gave this course a couple years ago on how to go over uh, how to use and edit uh, this particular form. Uh, so before I dive into all that, because we're going to look at that again together in just a second, let me see who else is here and what you guys are saying. Amy McKeever's here. I'm especially looking for any kind of questions, comments, feedback you guys might have about writing patterns or about pattern templates or about the universal format or anything like that. So please keep, keep, the, keep that conversation coming. Kay Mathis is here. So good to see you, Kay. Delia's here from California. DePauli, she says, I have to start the pattern writing course. I plan to start in January. DePauli, you have such excellent feedback. You already kind of have that mindset for looking, um, for looking at how to be precise in what you do and what you say. So I think you are just going to be an excellent student in that course. I can't wait to hear your feedback. Sharon Osborne, she, yes, she's interested in this. Jennifer says, yes, please. Uh, Francis, yes, I definitely need more help in writing my own patterns. And that's why we're sharing this template here today. While this, just this template is part of a, uh, a massive course that we have, uh, I definitely wanted to share that there's so much more to a pattern template than just throwing down instructions on a page. So that's what I wanted to, sh you know, just kind of pause and, and share with you guys today. Okay, she says, I took the pattern writing class and I love the templates in the class. I'm so glad you feel that way. Thank you, Kay. Good morning, Crystal. Thank you for joining. Abigail, hello. I'm hoping to start this course over the holidays when I'm off work. Abigail, I can't wait to hear what you think about the course. DePauli says, I bought the course when it was on sale. Yeah, we had a major sale in our birthday month this past October, so I'm glad you snagged that sale. She says, now working on Christmas and holiday gifts, really excited to start the class. Kay Mathis, oh wow, everyone should go and look at the templates. You will love them. Thank you. Sharon, I have this course on my to-do list for 2021. Linda Woodthorpe is here. Hello, Linda. So good to see you. And Paula, you are the last comment that I see for now. She says, thank you. I learned everything from you, Selena, and the ACA. So thanks to you. You're a wonderful student and you're just a wonderful part of our community. And we're lucky to have you. So thank you for being here. So much love to DePauli and all of our ACA members. Okay. So what I want to share with you guys is just one of the templates that we have for you here today. And again, there's three free samples, okay? 
So you guys are welcome to save and utilize these. And again, there's instructions on the page. And then we also have a very old video just to kind of go over some tips and tricks for you and stuff like that. So the template that I want to show you here today looks like this. It's very basic. Uh, it's very much open to your own creative interpretation. And when I say creative interpretation, if you want the font to be different, if you want the colors to be different, if you want a different background, if you want to rearrange things, it's a blank canvas for that. However, it's very clean and it's very neat. So if you just want to use it exactly the way that it is, you are welcome to, okay? So let me just show you some of the parts of this pattern template, just so you can understand why uh, you know, why this is a great universal tool for you to use in the pattern writing process. Now, first, you guys, again, maybe looking at this and going, this is a little bland. I need some more pizzazz. I want it to look different. Well, at the American Crochet Association, we do teach in that universal format. And what we found was that so many different individuals like to still print their patterns. Now, crocheters who are following this video, let me know in the comments, what do you guys do with crochet patterns? Do you print them? Do you save them and maybe view them from a mobile device like a phone or a tablet? Do you, do you only read patterns on your desktop? How do you utilize patterns? Again, we found that a lot of people actually print patterns. So the reason I, def I, I designed this particular template in this fashion is with that person in mind. If you are gonna be printing a crochet pattern, you don't want a lot of colors, you don't want a lot of things going on that's just gonna eat your ink, right? You may not even want to print anything other than the instructions. So with those two things in mind, I definitely advise to have a cover page. And what I define as a cover page is everything before the instructions, right? The materials, the gauge, the sizes, the stitch key, the specialty stitch key, the notes, everything that you need to know and everything that you need to do and everything that you need to have to write the pattern. And that way, if you do print your crochet patterns, maybe you come across this template and you go, great, I'm not going to print the cover page because I don't want to use my ink on all of this stuff. And maybe you put a background and maybe it's cute and maybe there's all this stuff. It looks great on the internet, but you go, that's going to be a nightmare to print. So I'm just not going to print this page, but then I see my instructions are all just on one or maybe two pages. That's what I'm going to print, and it's going to be printer friendly. Keep that in mind. Let's get back to the cover page, okay? Now, whenever you're writing crochet patterns, a lot of people only focus on the instructions. And everything before the instructions, they just kind of go, eh, crocheters know what to do. But, but, but... There's too much to know and do in the crochet world. And while a lot of it falls into a universal template, you as a writer should give everything that is absolutely needed to know and to do and to learn and to try in that cover page, okay? Now, whenever I teach um, pattern writing, whenever I teach pattern reading, whenever I teach people how to crochet, I always tell them, start with the cover page. Before you just pick up your yarn and your hook and you start going, the cover page is gonna tell you everything you need to know about, hey, what skill level is required here? Even if the skill level is not listed on the pattern. And side note, side note, even if a skill level is listed on a pattern, I guarantee you 90% of the time, it's dead wrong. So you can't rely on that information alone. So as you're reading over this, you're going to see everything that you need, right? I want to make this exact poncho that I see here. I want it to look exactly like that. I don't want it to be any different. I want it to look that way and I want it to fit that way and that's what I want, right? So you're going to want to know exactly what yarn was used and how much yarn was used. So you can't just say, you know, what if, for example, it just said worsted for yarn? What? Why would it tell me what yarn you used and tell me exactly how much, especially if there's more than one size? Let's say there's five different sizes. Do all five of those sizes use the same amount of yarn? Maybe they don't. So maybe you need three skeins, three skeins, four skeins, four skeins, five skeins. Your crochet pattern needs to have that information. And that way, if I'm making the largest size, I know I need five, five skeins, right? Uh, color, you know, yarn brand, yarn type, fiber content, yarns, meters, ounces, grams, all that information is needed because maybe I want to use that exact yarn or maybe I want to substitute. And if I'm going to substitute, 
I want to know exactly what yarn was used. And that way I can determine what factors, um, what characteristics within that yarn I'm going to substitute. So for example, if this particular poncho is 50% cotton, 50% wool, maybe I want those same attributes. Maybe I don't. At least I have that information so I can find a reasonable substitute. What crochet hook is used? What other kinds of materials or tools were used? Yarn needle, scissors, measuring tape. Maybe this has pom-poms. Maybe uh, you need a, what do you need? Maybe you need a hairpin lace tool. What kind of tools were utilized to make this exam exact sample? This is gonna help you. So again, maybe you know a hairpin lace tool was used to make something and you're looking at this crochet item and you go, oh, oh, it's hairpin lace. Oh, I don't have a hairpin lace loom. So maybe I should get one so that I can, you know, really utilize this. Maybe Tunisian crochet hooks. Whatever it is, you understand what tools are needed. Gauge, what is the gauge? You should always list gauge on a pattern, especially, or most importantly, whenever size matters. So whenever there is more than one size, and you, you want your audience to replicate that exact size. Let's just use a hat, for example. There are very few incremental changes between a 16 inch hat, you know, that fits a baby, and then an 18 inch hat, which fits a toddler, and a 20 inch hat, which fits a young adult, and then a 22 inch hat that fits an adult. There are very few incremental changes to that. So maybe you want to substitute, maybe you don't want to substitute in terms of yarn. Maybe you want to make that exact 18 inch hat, not a 16 or a 20. That's where gauge is going to be very important. And you as a pattern writer need to assure that your gauge that you're writing on here is exact. Because whenever a person is following uh, a pattern, they want to be sure that if they are using the exact same yarn, if they are using the exact same hook, if they are following your gauge, that the size comes out accordingly. Uh, stitch key. I love talking about this, especially in a universal level, because pattern writers, people who want to write patterns, and this is kind of one of my biggest pet peeves, this is something we need to change in the crochet world, you think everything, absolutely everything needs to be an acronym. That's not true. And as a matter of fact, it may be to your detriment that you're overusing acronyms because not everything needs to be an acronym. Really, the way I like to teach pattern writing is that there should be a stitch key that shows acronyms and a specialty stitch and technique key that also maybe has terms or acronyms and definitions. Now let's talk about each one independently. Now a stitch key really should only list crochet stitch and term abbreviations with full names. And when I say crochet stitch in terms, I mean basic ones, right? So I'm talking like foundational crochet stitches, chain, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, uh, stitch, stitches, slip stitch. And that's basically it. If you want to make other crochet terms acronyms, it might be to your own detriment. Maybe, maybe skip is listed in your pattern five times. Does it need to be an acronym? It's not necessary. The reason we use acronyms is to get condensed space. So think about what you want to um, what you want to make an acronym. Think about how many times you're utilizing that word within your pattern, and think about whether or not it's going to make any difference. When someone is reading and following your crochet patterns, if they see acronyms every other word, and they're constantly having to go back up to the stitch key to go, wait a minute, S K? What is it? Oh yeah, it's skip. Oh shoot. If they're constantly having to go back and look it's not a great experience for them. They're gonna question themselves, they might miss things. It's not a good experience. So, for your stitch key, in terms of acronyms, you as a pattern writer, please don't make everything an acronym. It's not necessary. It's not gonna condense that much space. So again, if you're using chain within a pattern 87 times, yes, that's why we put CH instead of chain. Same thing for all of these other stitches here, okay? Now let's move down to specialty stitch and technique key, okay? Now I do have some really important notes here, and again, everything that I'm saying, you guys can find in the link in the video description, okay? Now your specialty stitch and technique key should list all specialty crochet stitch and technique abbreviations with their full names. So for example, maybe instead of writing two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, Maybe in terms of the kind of repeat you want to write, maybe in terms of your stitch count that you want to write, 
you can write it that way, two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet into one space. Or maybe you call that a fan, okay? So instead of writing two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, you know, 87 times within your pattern, maybe you just call that a fan, you list fan here, and then you give the definition for it. Now, I will say this too, just because I'm, I'm sure that your next question may be, does everything have to have a definition? No, not everything that you place here has to have a definition. Think about it this way. If a definition has multiple meanings, right? And I'll, I'll give you an example in just a minute. You have to outline that accordingly, okay? So for example, there are quite a few things in the crochet world that you can produce in multiple ways. There's no one way to do it. So a shell is a great example. A fan is a great example. A cluster is a great example. If you're using any one of those, what kind of cluster, what kind of fan, what kind of shell? You know, I just talked about fan a minute ago as being two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. A fan can also be double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. It can also be triple crochet, triple crochet, three chains, three triple crochets. So do you see what I mean in terms of there are so many different variations that if you're going to be using these, make sure you add that definition there because there's no one way to do any one of these and various others. However, if you are utilizing a specialty stitch or technique that only has one universal definition available, you don't need to add a definition, okay? So some great examples of that is an adjustable loop. Is there multiple interpretations and, and outcomes for that? No. Uh, even if your technique varies in how you, how you work an adjustable loop, it does one thing, right? So it's not like a fan or a shell. So some really good examples of things that don't need a definition would be maybe a front post a back post, and it doesn't matter what the stitch is, double crochet, single crochet, you know, there's, there's really only one way to accomplish that. And so anytime there isn't a variation for whatever you're doing, you don't have to have a definition, okay? And that way you're not going, do I have to put a definition for a chain and a single crochet and a double crochet and a this and a that? No. So think about it in those terms, and that should give you better clarity. Whew, notes. Okay, notes are any kind of special details about the pattern that the user should know before they begin. Okay, it's really just kind of like, hey, when you're making this pattern, do this, know this, you know, this, th think about it in these terms. So an example could be that, you know, you may, you may put in the notes section, this pattern is worked from the top down in two parts, you work the neck, then you work the body. Maybe right here is where you say the beginning chain two always counts as a stitch. The beginning chain one never counts as a stitch. And that way, if you put it in the notes section here, it's not something you have to write in the instruction section. Um, and that way your user just has that information and you're condensing space, right? Okay, so that's the cover page. I'm gonna pause now. I would love to hear if there's any kind of questions, comments, feedback that you guys have. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jerry Sue is here. Hello, Jerry Sue. Hello, June. So good to see you. Melissa has a question. How can we create patterns that are not similar to others out there? That is a huge conversation. Uh, there's a lot of information in that. And really, I will say that we have lots of answers for you, and they're all in this course, Crochet Pattern Writing Certification. You can find the link in the video description. Basically, it's all about what you know and where you seek information and what is already available and where you're getting your information from. So it's too big of an an it's too big of a question for me to just give you a one size fits all. But if you want to write professionally in the crochet world, if you want to take on that professional role, there are paths you can take. There are um, things you can do to assure that you're not infringing upon the copyrights, the trademarks of other entities and individuals and publications. So really, my one size fits all answer to you is it's the amount of research that you do. You can't just blindly come into this field and say, mm, I don't have to do any research. I think this is good enough. I've never seen anything like it. You just can't do that. Um, and uh, really in the publishing world, as with anything that's published, severe uh, rules, guidelines, restrictions are put onto copyright infringement and plagiarism. And so if you're going to be publishing anything from a cookbook to a recipe, to a blog post, to a pattern, you really have to understand what those terms and guidelines are and you have to understand your market that you're working in. 
So how can you create patterns that are not similar to others out there? You have to put in the time, effort, research, and legwork. Serena's here. She's tagging a friend. Jerry prints her crochet patterns. June prints hers. Uh, Francis says, I save my patterns in my files on my iPad for easy access. Amy, she says, I like to print them while working. See, so many people like to print their crochet patterns. So just going back to what I initially said about creating a printer-friendly template, that's why I made this so bland. Can you jazz this up with your own personality? Absolutely. But I would caution you to stay within that universal guideline and template. Think about the individual that's going to be utilizing your pattern and think about the, the way in which they're going to be doing that. Abigail, I do both. If it's a pattern with multiple sizes, then I print for sure. Rama, yes, I do both. Save them and sometimes I print them. Kay Mathis, I so wish everyone would use those templates. It would make crocheting so much easier. Not everyone knows to crack their eggs before putting them in the batter. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought up a cooking analogy because that's another way I like to look at crochet patterns. You know, before we tackle a recipe, you don't just dive into the instructions, right? You have to make sure you have all the ingredients first and then also you you see the way the, pa the, the you know, you also can have an understanding for what techniques you need. Oh my gosh, I have to blanch and boil and dice and cut and this and that. Maybe this isn't for me. We can do the same thing with crochet patterns. Hello, Angel. Thanks for checking in. Melissa, there's a typo. Is there? Where is it? S-K-E-I-N-S. -E Where is the typo? I would love to correct it. So if there's one on here, please let me know. I don't see any red underline and skein here. So let me know if there's a typo. Thank you, Melissa. Aurora, hey, hey, so good to see you. Aurora shared, I'm so glad. Oh, great question here. Melissa, doesn't the gauge also depend on the tension of the individual? I'm so glad you asked that. Okay, let's go back to gauge for just a second. Gauge within a pattern is the gauge of the individual who wrote the pattern. So for example, let's say I wrote a pattern. I have lots of, lots of things here. Where, let, me, let me pick up something small that's crocheted. Okay, so I actually do write patterns for a living, okay? This is a pattern that I wrote. So as a pattern writer, I can use any yarn and any hook size and I can do whatever I want to do because I'm creating it, right? Now, as I use any yarn and any hook and any style that I want to create something, whenever I make that finished product, I have to then write the instructions for it. So gauge is something that I have to list that is my gauge. So if you want to make the exact thing that I have listed, you wanna make this wine tote right here and you want it to be a wine tote size, you as a pattern reader have to match the gauge that I list, which is my gauge. So there is no one universal gauge. Gauge is whoever wrote this pattern, what was their gauge? And that's the thing that you're trying to match. So there is, so I guess let me re reiterate that point that I just made before. You know, the gauge of me as a pattern writer is gonna be different as the gauge of you as a pattern writer. So Melissa, even if you and I were both creating wine totes and we were both using the exact same yarn, maybe your stitch and tension is going to be completely different than my stitch and tension. So your pattern would list your gauge and my pattern would list my gauge. So anytime you're reading a pattern and you see gauge and its size is crucial, you know, maybe you're making an afghan, it's like, meh, it's fine. But if you're making a hat or if you're making something that needs to fit something specifically, you're making a poncho, you have to keep in mind that the gauge listed is from the person who wrote the pattern and that's the thing that you have to meet and match. I know I reiterated the same point like five times, but I really felt like I had so much more to say on it. So I guess I simplified it by just reiterating the same point a few times. Melissa, let me know what you think about that. Delia, I'd rather crochet than cook. I like both. <laughs> uh, Melissa, the typo is at the very end of materials. Oh, here it is. Thank you. Fixed. Easy fix. That way, when you guys come to this page, you'll see that and it'll be fixed. And just know that this template uh, is completely customizable. So whenever you find this template, here are instructions for you to save your own copy. Again, I do have a video that tells you a little bit more about using this template. 
Uh, and that way, you know, if I misspelled something here, it's something that you can correct after you get your copy. All right, so I do have some information here on the instruction section, but again, this is where it gets really sticky. There's a lot that you need to know and understand and be able to apply to be an effective pattern writer. Uh, and the reason I say that is because anyone can write at a beginner level. Anyone can write at an easy level. And again, if you're just writing your own thing and if it's for you, there's nothing wrong with that, right? You write at the level that you want to write at, that you're comfortable at. However, in the crochet world, in the professional publishing world, you might want to up your knowledge and skill and ability, not only in the kind of things that you execute, but the way that you write your patterns, because when you, when you, uh, you, know, when you advance those areas, that's where the instructions become more, let me say it this way. The more knowledge and skill and ability you have, the more intricate you are able to not only imagine, but you're able to write in an effective way. You might be able to crochet anything. You might be able to crochet lace pineapple wedding dresses with, with expert right uh, ability, but can you create something in that realm and effectively write the instructions for that? You might get caught up in how to write a repeat, how to condense, what's the difference between a row and a round, why do I have to write that way, uh, when do it, should I call this a cluster or just write it out. There's a lot of questions that are absolutely answered in our crochet pattern writing course. So any question that you may have, uh, come on over here and read through this course because there might be an answer for you. For example, how can you, I, I want to know how to write diagrams or read diagrams or should I use diagrams? There's a course on that. I want to know what it means to write a pattern, uh, you know, with variegated yarn. You have more information about what that means, right? So there's more information there. So I'm saying all of that to tell you that I can't in this, in, in this narrow course today or this narrow tip today, I can't tell you everything that you need to know about instructions other than what's listed here in the tips section. First and foremost, know the difference between writing in rows and rounds, okay? Uh, know the difference between a row and a round. Um, also know the difference between right side and wrong side. That may matter for your pattern, it may not. For example, there's a very clear right side to this wine tote. Does it really matter? Mm, maybe not really, but there is definitely a right side to this fabric. All the stitches are, you know, facing front, and then there's a back side, all the stitches are facing back. So maybe that, you know, that's going to matter for whatever it is that you're making. All patterns should absolutely have a stitch count at the end of every single row or round. Uh, how can you write a stitch count? When to know what counts as a stitch and what doesn't count as a stitch. Maybe there's 10 double crochet, um, you know, five single crochet, and that gives you 15 stitches total. How are you going to write that in an effective way so that your, uh, the person who's reading and following your crochet pattern doesn't have any questions? So the reason this universal template is so important to me as a crochet lover is that I really would like to create a world where we do have a universal template, where we do have universal standards and guidelines because a lot of them exist. So I wanted to create this template in this course so that we could have that information, so that we could all use the same information and that way we're all writing at a certain level, right? We're all reading and following and understanding at a certain level because wouldn't it be amazing if let's say you do become a professional pattern writer and let's say millions of people look at your crochet patterns every year and you don't get many questions. Think about that. People aren't coming to you saying, I'm confused. People aren't coming to you saying, what did you mean by this? People aren't coming to you saying, there's no stitch count. How many stitches am I supposed to have? You have a template, you have a format, you have guidelines so that you know exactly what information to give so that it's not too much and a universal audience can read and follow and apply and understand and enjoy the creativity that you put forth. So that is what I wanted to share with you guys today. Any other questions, comments, feedback? I don't see anything. Do you guys just not, did I just talk so much that there are no questions? All right, I will pause for final questions, whatever they may be. I did want to remind everyone here that 
Uh, the links for the things that I'm sharing with you guys today are in the video description. So come on over, read more, educate yourself, uh, questions, comments, feedback, they are always welcome. You guys can snag any one of these three, all three if you like, pattern template. I'm just showing you the first one on the list. All right, I do see, oh, great question from Alyssa. Where is the best place to include photos to illustrate instructions? Is it best to add those at the very end of the pattern? I'm so glad that you asked that question because another one of, um, uh, so the way I like to teach, and this is definitely mentioned in the class, is that this is very uh, instruction focused in a word sense, okay? So whenever we're talking about writing crochet patterns, we're talking about utilizing our words so that we don't need pictures. Now, yes, there is a template that does include, is it one, two, or three, I don't remember. There is a template that includes, hey, if you absolutely have to have photo instructions, make sure they're on the last page. And then here's a template for that. You know, maybe it's three squares across and then, you know, three, you know, you just kind of keep going down. So there is a template that we do have if you absolutely must include, um, you know, photo tutorials. But the way we like to teach our writers to write is to not include those. Think about the words that you're using and the way I teach in the classes, I, I call it the peanut butter and jelly, ex, you know, example. So if you were telling someone how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, what words would you use so they would understand exactly how to make one? And the reason I love to use that example is everyone's like, I know how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's dumb. <laughs> but, but if you're only following the instructions that are given to you, you can't go get two pieces of bread. You go, what, what do, can I use sourdough? Do I have to slice the bread? How... Do, can I slice it two inches? Is it one inch? Can I, like, there are so many questions just about the bread, right? So you don't want to just use pictures because that's not a written crochet pattern. Instead, you may want to go get six by six inch white thinly sliced bread to make this exact sandwich, right? You don't need to share a picture because you've already told them exactly what to use. So again, I'm using a lot of words, I'm sharing a lot of information, but that's another very important aspect to me about writing universal patterns is utilizing your words as best as possible. Think about that Peter, peanut butter and jelly uh, sandwich scenario. Um, and hopefully whenever you write patterns, you as a pattern writer, that gives even you a better scenario. You're not relying on, okay, now I have to take a picture of this and a picture of the every pattern I write has to have 87 pictures or 12 pictures or whatever it is, you know, it's saving you a lot of that heartache just because you know and understand um, the, the words that you can utilize that are going to best matter. So hopefully that helps. Uh, Dipali, your patterns are very clear and easy to understand. Stitch counts at the end is very helpful. Yes, stitch counts are key. Dipali, at the end of each round or row, I meant, I knew what you meant. Tanya says, great session. All right, okay, well, if Tanya says, great session, we can end on that note. Everyone, I hope you enjoyed this tip today. Uh, please go and download, take advantage of this pattern template. Um, I really created this to be a positive resource in the crochet community. So if you guys enjoy this template, please let me know in the comments. If you guys think this chat and this template is amazing, could you do a few things for me? Could you share this video with, uh, with some of your crochet friends uh, so that they can come and snag this free template too, especially while it's free, because I don't think it's always gonna be a free preview, okay? So definitely take advantage of this as soon as possible. All right, everyone, thank you so much for being part of the American Crochet Association. It is a joy and a pleasure and a privilege to be here with you. Peace, love, crochet. See you next time. Bye-bye.